Steve Chavis with number one of 38. This is a marimba I just finished. Took about six years to rebuild it. I bought it from a man that uh, in Pennsylvania, Jeremy DeRoss, uh, Royersford, Pennsylvania, and it was totally trashed. All the resonators were taken apart, meaning there's four sides to the resonator. They were all taken apart. On the bottom, they have the pyramids. A lot of them had the pyramids, but I had to piece it together like a puzzle from all the uh, four sides. And some of the pyramids were even missing, so I had to add those myself. And then some of them had two sides of the pyramid, and I added those, so it took a lot of work and tried to use old wood to fix the resonators and um, it's made by Crescencio Mancia you can see the other ones made by Crescencio on the other video 5 of 38 and those are just masterpieces and once I got this finished and put the pig intestine on the resonators it's just a wonderful marimba it sounds so beautiful you barely have to hit the marimba to get the buzzing going and the resonators everything about it is just a masterpiece I'm guessing since one of the ones that that's the 5 of 38 was made in 1944 I'm guessing with this design there's a bunch of things that that you can tell he was experimenting and got better and better in the design but I'm guessing this one was made in the uh, 30s 1930s at the earliest and um, maybe even earlier well I'm not sure but I'm just guessing uh, you can see the inlay design he uses that top design a lot um, I can get the light to not glare and you can see the top and the bottom design and then in the middle it's got the dark piece now he uses a lot of diamond designs light and dark and and so uh, he's got the legs again you can tell it's a Mancia marimba because of the legs they're so intricate then on the bottom with the braces in between, <clears throat> me and one of my marimba partners, Hovey Corbin, we needed braces on the bottom between the legs. Those long pieces there. I made those. Hovey cut a lot of the design, the inlay, and um, then I pieced it together. And I've never seen legs or braces that do that but it just adds so much to it. Then the resonator is on the bottom. You can see the little silver tips. Uh, Crescencio did those on a lathe. And then the little pieces in between the resonators so there's not a space. And then the resonators are rectangular instead of square like most Mexican marimbas. That's another telling sign that Crescencio uh, made it. And it's a five and a half octave, two octaves below middle C. The design on the side. <clears throat> you can see some of the new design. I There was a lot of pieces missing, so um, we had to make those, and I got a bunch from Mexico. But I ran short, so we had to make a, a bunch of the other ones. The bars are in good shape. There's no dance on them. And it did get beat up, but not too bad for that, meant for that being that old. On the side here, I had to do a lot of inlay work. And, of course, it's a lot lighter, but in about 50 years, all the inlay will match in color. It just aged 
as all wood and it got darker and darker. Now come around. The bars are not chipped. It's just a wonderful. Somebody really took care of it until whoever bought it on on eBay. Somebody bought it on eBay and then Jeremy bought it from him and Jeremy thought he was going to play classical music on the on the marimba, but it's pretty much impossible to play that because you need so many different mallet hardnesses to play this type of marimba. So he sold it to me, and again it took about six years. It wasn't on. It wasn't a 24/7 job. It was just whenever I had time and and energy. And we'll play it sometime. I don't know if I'm going to use this one uh, for gigs. We might take it on a couple of gigs, but I'm not really sure of moving this thing. It's just a masterpiece, and I want to keep it that way. Okay. Thank you. Goodbye.